Hey guys, John Jr. here, bringing you guys another WPF video, this time weeks 4 through 6. It has been a few weeks since I uploaded weeks 1 through 3, so if you guys missed that section of the season, go ahead and check that out in the top right hand corner of your screen right now. There were some good games, but we did get a little bit unlucky and I introduced to you guys what the WPF curse is, where unfortunately I do happen to get pretty unlucky in most seasons of WPF that I've been a part of. Fear not though, because I am him and I was pretty confident that we could pick up the season one and two isn't the worst start in the world so i was pretty confident we could make playoffs at this point there are nine weeks in this wpf season so going five and four is pretty realistic and a pretty pretty likely outcome if i don't get super super unlucky so we'll go ahead and see what happens with that as we get into the first team builder so the first team that we're going to be playing is going to be a garchomp Terra regielecki and sneezler team and that is going to be very scary somebody made a very good suggestion to put the teams up on the screen but unfortunately the teams changed a lot throughout the course of the season so i do not remember the exact teams so unfortunately we're just going to see my mods and my brief explanation if you want to skip these little portions of the team builder that's completely fine i'm going to keep the same format that i did last week so against this Gar Garchomp, Sneasler, Terra Regieleki team. My team consisted of an Air Balloon, Iron Moth with Terra Fairy. This was here primarily to wall with Garchomp. I did not really think he was going to have very much coverage of any coverage outside of simply Dragon and Ground. And we are Agility 3 Attack. We then have a Great Tusk, which is more defensive. It is here primarily to take hits from the Regieleki, but it can also be a good pivot into both the Garchomp and the Sneasler if need be. We have Rocky Helmet, pretty much full Fizz, Death, Zapdos again here to help alleviate pressure on the Sneasler. Tinkaton was here because because actually Weavile got a little bit scary if we didn't have the Tinkaton. Even though it's not a great pre-home, I do think that having Tinkaton for that Weavile was very, very important. And we could also get rocks up with this Tinkaton because we couldn't fit it on our Great Tusk. We then have an Adamant Roaring Moon with the Choice Band, U-Turn Crunch, Scale Shot, and Iron Head. This mod just does a lot of damage and makes it for a good pivot into our other Pokemon like Iron Moth and Great Tusk. And then we have Last Lock Quagsire. We brought both grounds just because of that Terra Regia Lucky. because if he is going to be Terra Grass to beat this Quagsire, he's not going to be Terra Ice to beat the Roaring Moon was kind of the thought process behind that. And then we had Rock Tomb specifically to make that Regieleki lower its speed and we have Toxic Spice to get them up if the Sneasler goes down. To start off the battle, I lead Great Tusk as they lead Corviknight, and that lead is not great for us, so we switch Zapdos as they U-turn right on into their Garchomp, which was a little surprising to me because Zapdos is our Garchomp answer. We unfortunately have to rely on Hurricane as they sub up, but we do break the sub once. They Stone Edge the following turn and do massive damage to us as we miss the following Hurricane. I'm just going to go Great Tusk now because Great Tusk does wall this Pokemon as well, and I'm going to knock off on the incoming Corviknight. Right back into Zapdos we go as they actually go for the Roost, which is fantastic because our Zapdos can then Roost and gain some HP. Feedback. They send out Garchomp again, and now that we know they're set and they are physical, we go into Great Tusk, which should wall this forever. After a lot of pivoting between these four Pokemon, our Great Tusk gets into a position to KO the Corviknight. Weavile comes in, and this is exactly why we brought Tinkaton. I send out Tinkaton, and Tinkaton takes almost nothing from this Ice Spinner. Garchomp is not going to appreciate this Gigaton Hammer, as I can just go right back into the Great Tusk on this Garchomp. I'm going to throw off another knockoff, as my opponent makes a very good double going into Garchomp as I go into Tinkaton. I make a hard pivot into Zapdos, and to be honest, I don't remember why. Maybe my Great Tusk couldn't have taken two if he was max attack adamant. But I pivot into Great Tusk the turn after as he gets up a sub and an SD, which is very scary. I get to break the sub, and now go Iron Moth to show off the amazing tech we have, as it's not even going to matter because we outspeed it and we kill the Garchomp anyway. Regieleki comes in, and I'm just going to go into Quagsire, hopefully to see whether this is Terra Grass for our Quagsire or Terra Ice for the Roaring Moon. And the hard switch out tells me that either he specs or he is probably Terra Ice for the Roaring Moon. We get Tinkaton in as Sneasler comes in. I think Zapdos can take any hit that this wants to go for. So I go hard Zapdos as the Swords Dance comes off, which is insanely scary. But thankfully, we scare them out. We throw off a Discharge and in comes the Regieleki. I go Roaring Moon on this one because I did not anticipate them to go for the Volt Switch twice in a row. Don't think I should have made this play, but I did. And in comes the Weavile on my Roaring Moon. And they actually get a crit on the Volt Switch, which is very, very crucial. I again go Tinkaton to wall this forever. I'm just going to go for a Gigaton Hammer as they decide to sack off their Florges. Sneezer comes back out and the same situation occurs. I just go into Zapdos as they actually manage to pick up the KO and get the roll on the Zapdos. I believe that was a roll. I go Quagsire as they reveal last move to be Trailblaze, so now either they don't hit Iron Moth or they don't hit Tinkaton because they either have Close Combat or Dire Claw for their last move, supposedly. I Chilling Water to put it at minus one, which helped with a couple of calcs, and I take the gamble. I think they don't have Dire Claw. I go right into my Iron Moth, and I was right. They click Close Combat, Iron Moth takes 75, and we're able to take that Pokemon out. 
I stacked the Iron Monster because at this point it is completely useless, outsped by both Pokemon, and Roaring Moon at this point should beat the Regieleki, and Tinkatone should always beat the Weavile. They Terra into Electric and Volt Switch, and crits our Roaring Moon. So not only the crit before, but this crit puts it Roaring Moon in range of any move from the Regieleki, whereas if neither of those crits happened, Roaring Moon lived whatever this thing wanted to go for since it was Terra Electric. So actually, we lose again because of really shitty luck. Our Tinkaton's gonna go down, and then our Roaring Moon's gonna go down, and we're gonna fall to one in three, which I, I don't know, man. It's something about electric types in this WPF season. It is what it is, man. We couldn't pull it out. I Maybe I could have made a couple plays different. I did a couple of things that weren't optimal, but at the end of the day, I should have won that game. And it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Pokemon. For this next game, we are facing a horrifying team. Top three mons are Terra Urshifu. Yes, Terra was allowed on Urshifu this season. Landorus and Baxcalibur. Very scary Pokemon, very, very difficult for me to prep for. Thought this was a horrible matchup in general, not only because of the Terra Urshifu that I felt was almost impossible for us to beat, but because Landorus also did us pretty dirty. The team that we brought though, we have a Lumberry Roaring Moon with Dragon Dance, Roost, Scale Shot, and Crunch. Dual Stabs just did very, very good in this game. We have a Defensive Great Tusk with Taunt, Close Combat, Knockoff, and Ice Spinner, just Max Fizz Def. We have a Max Fizz Def Torkoal with Heat Rock, Stealth Rock, Flamethrower, Body Press, and Rapid Spin. We have once again a Wind Con Iron Moth with Agility, Fiery Dance, Fire Blast, and Energy Ball with the Charcoal because he does not have resist on his team to fire, and those that do resist fire are weak to grass. We're bringing an Air Balloon Tinkaton this week for the Landorus, and we actually have Ice Hammer, which I've never seen ran otherwise. Tinkaton is there also for the Bax Calibur, and then we are bringing a Spud Daff Dodon Sparse for the Landorus. To start this game off, they lead Salazzle as I lead Great Tusk, and we're gonna make some double switches here. I believe I took way too much damage from a Specs Fire Blast, so I'm just gonna go Roaring Moon, which should wall this forever as they go into Wigglytuff. I go Torkoal as they get rocks up, but I'm just gonna spin those away the following turn, and then I go Roaring Moon as they go Salazzle, and this is fine because I have Scale Shot. We're actually gonna break through the sub and kill that Pokemon. Torkoal is gonna come in on the Wigglytuff as it goes for the Dazzling Gleam, and we're going to exchange rocks, which is fine by me because I can just remove them the following turn. After a lot of exchanges later, I get Iron Moth in as he gets rocks up, and we are going to kill the Wigglytuff from 94% with our Charcoal Iron Moth. Bax comes in, and this Pokemon's scary, but we have Air Balloon Tinkaton for this exact moment, as they're gonna switch out and take 53% on their Kilowattro. I go Roaring Moon to eat up that Volt Switch, and they send in the Demon, Urshifu. They tear water, they click Bulk Up, and I'm gonna tell you guys straight, the game is over. There is not one thing that this team can do against a Terra Water Bulk Up Urshifu. My best bet is Iron Moth, but uh, a plus one sucker has a pretty good chance to kill and if it doesn't then plus two sucker always kills me so we are just gonna go through here and look at that he gets one two three you get the idea like we lost all of our pokemon i think terror urshifu specifically free terra especially is ridiculous i could have prepped better around this but i don't i don't know man free terra urshifu is absurd i don't know why it was allowed obviously i don't think in future seasons it will be allowed but this was just I got spanked by Urshifu, it's all it is, man. So at this point, we are one and four, and we need to win four straight in order to even have a chance of making playoffs. And that's all gonna start with this next game. We are facing an Iron Bundle and Lando T team, which is a little scary, but the team that we are bringing is going to be. We have a Max B Great Tusk with four attacks leftovers. We have Terra Water Iron Moth with agility, three attacks. Again, gonna be the win con, man. We are boots this week. Zapdos with boots, Roost Hurricane, Thunderbolt, and Volt Switch. This is gonna be a pivot and hopefully a decent Lando check. Another boots Pokemon, Torkoal, Stealth Rock, three attacks. We have a Choice Scarf Roaring Moon, which should get the attack boost in the sunlight. This should outspeed everything and basically put him in a really, really tough spot. And then we have a Spud Def to Dunsparce once again. This is our guaranteed Iron Bundle check. We're gonna go ahead and start off the game as anticipated. I lead Great Tusk and they lead Glamora. I'm gonna fire off a massive knockoff on the incoming Landorus. And I'm gonna go for the double knockoff as no way you stay in with Landorus because Great Tusk has Ice Spinner. And I'm gonna knock off the Rotom's Boost, which can be clutch if we get rocks off. I go Zapdos on the overheat and I'm able to roost past this as he burns us. And I'm gonna go Great Tusk as my opponent makes a fantastic read and goes for the double Willow. I go for close combat. We do a little bit of damage. He's gonna go for overheat into about half of our HP, which is insane. I then sack the Great Tusk to the Landorus. I go Zapdos and I unfortunately miss a Hurricane that could have been pretty crucial on the Glamora. I anticipate rocks to go up so I'm gonna go for a little bit of damage to get a read on this Glamora set, as I then Volt Switch into the Dedunsparce. 
This next sequence of plays, my opponent is absolutely in my head, staying in with Glamour as I boom burst and then going Rotom as I earth power. I'm gonna go for the boom burst, get some big damage on the Rotom, and I'm gonna roost to keep the Dunsparce healthy. They do miss an overheat, I'm not sure how much it mattered. I don't think they killed from that range because we're full speed death. And I'm just gonna throw off another roost, so it, it ultimately did not matter. They go Terra Hariyama. They're gonna go for a massive close combat, doing 39% to my Zapdos, and they actually bullet punch and take out the Zapdos. I'm able to rapid spin hazards away, but now without 71% to my Torkoal, and they actually switch out because they think that I outspeed now. I get my rocks up though. Rotom Moon is going to come in on the Rotom Heat, and of course, we are going to get paralyzed on the Discharge. I take out the Rotom, I go Iamoth, and they go Hariyama. I'm going to sack Torkoal because we no longer need Sun. I'm going to Fire Blast as Noivern comes in, and then I sack Roaring Moon, hoping they will Draco, not U turn. And if they do, the game's wrapped up. Iamoth wins. They do end up Dracoing. I Terra Water, I Agility, and the game's over. I kill Lando with Terra Blast. Hariyama fake outs, but it just doesn't have enough juice left to actually win the game. As I take out Noivern, and then as I make the only choking play that I could have and go hard to Dunsparce on the Hariyama, if they close combat it, they won the game, by the way. Uh, but Dunsparce is going to pick up the win against the Iron Bundle, and we're going to win the game. And finally, pick up a win. That is going to be our weeks four through six of WPF. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like. It really helps out the channel a ton. And we've got a lot of really cool content coming up within the coming weeks. I'm going to try to come out with week seven through nine very, very soon to not leave you guys hanging. And I want to finish this series before we move on to the actual WPF Wi-Fi series that's going to be coming out soon. But with all that being said, I really appreciate you guys checking out this video. Be sure to join my community discord if you have not already. We're going to have a community draft league coming up. I believe actually the rosters are going to get revealed today. So thank you guys so much for watching. And for now, guys, this has been John Jr. signing off.